It's Freedom Files with James Burns on American Freedom Radio. Welcome to the show. You're listening to Freedom Files live on this Tuesday afternoon. It is August 9th, 2011. I am James Burns, your host, along with Adam, my network producer, man the helm back at AFR HQ in Austin, Texas. I am coming at you live from Shreveport, Louisiana, and we're keeping an eye on a lot of things this afternoon on the Freedom Files radio show, taking a look at the Dow. It's kind of had a, well, as they're saying on Drudge, a bipolar Tuesday it's gone up, it's gone down. It looks like it might close around what 300 points plus. So, it's kind of been a roller coaster on the on Wall Street today. We're also looking into some other things as well, including what's been happening across the pond in the United Kingdom as these uh, riots in England continue to grow and fester. We'll be breaking that down as well along with uh well Al Gore um he had a little temper tantrum Last week at uh, the Aspen Institute, we'll be talking about that as well, and plenty of other things too, and gold is nearing $1,800, and this is something I didn't really think much about yesterday, and actually it was someone else on Facebook that pointed this out whenever I was you know, just sitting around you know, playing on Facebook looking at articles, because it is a good place where people do post information, that's one of the reasons why I do like uh, using Facebook and RTR.org and other social sites is it, it is a, a a pool for information not only you know for the intelligence agencies out there but also it allows us the opportunity to go in and and grab some vital news articles that the mainstream media normally doesn't cover. But uh, gold extends gains as Fed pledges uh, low rates until 2013. This one coming from Reuters. Gold extended its gains on Tuesday after the Federal Reserve said it would keep interest rates low for at least another two years to help the U.S. economy that is growing considerably weaker than expected. And th- this is the thing that I did not even think about yesterday whenever I was talking about the gold prices going back up. They're, 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 it's funny. Well, I mean, today, okay, today it's different. But yesterday, gold was actually higher than platinum. As far as I've been following the um, metal markets for the past couple of years, platinum has always been way ahead of gold. But uh, this afternoon, uh, platinum is back in the lead. Yesterday afternoon, gold was worth more than platinum. But right now, platinum is worth, um, see, $1,748.90. And gold is like right behind platinum at $1,737.30. And uh, silver is, of course, at $37.37. And palladium is seven hundred thirty three dollars even so it was interesting yesterday to see a metal like platinum, which historically for the past couple of years, I started really getting involved in gold and silver coins, I guess back in what two thousand four so I've been following it about seven years, and it's interesting that the first time ever in in my to my knowledge to my recollection that gold has ever actually been worth more. Then platinum, side by side, ounce to ounce, pound to pound. So, I mean, it's, it's a nice little turf war thing going on between gold and platinum at the moment. And I know there's more important things going on, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to wait a little bit to um, talk about what's going on with the stock market because it's still fluctuating right now, still going up and, you know, blah, blah. Anyways, I thought we'd talk a little bit more about what's going on in uh, the U.K., across the pond in England over these uh, riots. And I was trying to see about getting some people on the show, some citizens, uh, UK peeps, as I call them, on Facebook. And I'm sure a lot of them are probably in bed by now. I mean, it's what? Well, it's only 9 o'clock there. So if you are in the United Kingdom and you have uh, firsthand information for us, please uh, send me a message via Facebook or, well, go to, fa- go to freedomfiles.us. That's probably the best place to go. Freedomfiles.us, click on contact and send me your information about what you've seen firsthand, and I will, I will get that on the air as well. And I may even open up the phone lines in the 4 o'clock hour for people from the U.K. only, from England. So I may do that as well, depending on how many people want to come on the show and talk about what's happening over there. 
But I have my own thoughts about what's been transpiring in England. It's interesting that now uh, you have a lot more people buying baseball bats over there. I mean, obviously, they're, they're not probably big baseball fans. I don't know. Maybe they are. But the, the point is, is I think a lot of citizens you know, who are unable to purchase firearms because guns are illegal in the United Kingdom, they're doing the next best thing. They're getting bats. And apparently they're also selling a V for Vendetta Guy Fawkes masks as well. <laughs> so, I mean, you, have, you definitely have citizens arming themselves. I mean, probably on, um, in both camps, the innocent bystanders who aren't really part of these protests, but then the, the protesters as, themselves. And I'm not trying to demonize the protesters per se. I'm just saying that in, in the process of what's been happening, the riots have, have ended up you know, going across England now, started in Tottenham, but now it's all around London and other cities as well. But I can, I can imagine that there are citizens right now who, who have had their shops looted, who have, had, who have been victimized because of some of these rioters. And, and I, I think the majority of the protesters are probably not intentionally going after people, and they're not looting, but there's definitely always a group that likes to take advantage of situations like this and rob people, beat other people, loot, rape, and pillage. But I, I do believe that these riots started, you know, for, well, they started as a peaceful protest. And what happened was a couple of days ago on August 5th, uh, the death of Mark Duggan, he was uh, shot and killed in Tottenham by Metropolitan Police. Uh, the police claimed that Duggan fired first with uh, what they call a quote-unquote replica pistol that had been converted to fire live ammo. But according to the uh, IPCC, the Independent Police Complaints Commission, there is no evidence that Duggan shot at the police. So he was shot and killed. They say he's an alleged drug dealer. I mean, t take that for whatever it's worth. But the, the point is you have a citizen that was killed by a police officer. And they tried to cover it up. They tried to make it look like that that he shot first, and therefore the police would be justified in killing this guy. But anyways, up until a certain point, the protests were peaceful. But then they turned violent shortly after about 15 police officers started beating a 16-year-old girl. They got her on the ground and you know, with their shields, and yeah, she threw a rock. Okay, oh, big deal. Big freaking deal. I mean, did 15 of them have to pounce up on her and start beating the crap out of her? I mean, she was a 16-year-old girl, for crying out loud. <sighs> so from there, it spun out of control very, very quickly. And, you know, there's several reasons, several causes why this transpired. Obviously, police brutality, contempt of cop syndrome. It's not just uh, <laughs> isolated to the U.S. It happens all over the place. But you know, various opinions have uh, expressed uh, to the press and elsewhere suggesting possible uh, other factors, such as if the fatal shooting, uh, local tensions with the police, the high unemployment and cuts in public services, the economic crisis, uh, criminal opportunism. Yeah, and I think that's, you know, that's probably part of it. There's definitely plenty of criminals out there taking full advantage of this situation. Uh, recreational violence. There's always going to be people like that in any protest, in any riot. Uh, see, the chief constable of uh, West Midlands Police Force is reported to have uh, characterized the behavior of rioters in Birmingham as being motivated by greed, not anger. And there's probably different different factions, different elements within the, the protest and these groups as well. But, I mean, it spread. I mean, it started in Tottenham. They moved on to Brixton, Enfield, Ponders End, uh, Chingford Mount, Hackney, Croydon, Elling, and let's see, it's moved on to other cities as well. A lot of these are kind of around London, you know, suburbs of London. And um, outside of London, of course, you know, Birmingham, Bristol, Medway, Leeds, Liverpool, Nottingham, Oxford and Reading, Glasgow, uh, Salford. It's happening all over England, these, these massive protests. And it, it's to be expected, though. I mean, a lot of people were saying, well, well, this, this, is, this is just a, because, you know, all the protesters are, are, are black. Well, that's not true. I've seen plenty of a uh, video, plenty of uh, plenty of other evidence, photos and video, like I said, which shows Brits of all colors involved in these protests. I've seen black Brits, white Brits, other Brits. 
And unfortunately, yeah, there, there, is, there is a criminal element out there, right? There is an element that is on the streets in England that are pulling people out of cars, beating people, robbing people, looting stores, causing mayhem and destruction. And some of this could be the work of provocateurs. I mean, perhaps the powers that be wanted this to happen. They wanted this situation to get out of control. There seems to be a lot of elements transpiring in England which has led to this point. A lot of it has to do with the way their government is. Their government is just as bad as our government, perhaps even worse, because they have way more CCTV cameras all over the place. Uh, They have a very anti-gun country in the UK. Well, UK is countries, such as England, Wales, Scotland, North Ireland, and then all the other countries the uh, monarch, the Queen of England, happened to rule over. (laughs) <laughs> but, I mean, this, this is going to happen in a country that is very oppressive to its people, like the United Kingdom, specifically England. And, I mean, yeah, I mean, unemployment and cuts in public services, especially when people have become dependent on public services, you know, that, that's going to cause a reaction as well when, when police are going around you know, shooting and beating and killing citizens. I mean, this isn't the first story I've heard about from the Met Police doing this to citizens in England and London. I, I heard what a, one a couple months ago of a citizen in a wheelchair being beaten, and then a couple others as well. So this tension has most likely been brewing for quite some time. And unfortunately, you're going to have various groups out there that are going to unfortunately target other groups of people, and it's going to go back and forth. And you're going to have the wrong people taking full advantage of this sad situation that's transpired. And and the problem is you have innocent people that are being terrorized by other people who are legitimately angry by certain issues within their country. But unfortunately, a lot of the protesters and the rioters who have been looting stores and beating other citizens, they're, they're focusing on the wrong enemy. They should be focusing their anger towards the powers that be that run their government, their, their leaders, the royals, for example, the, who have had an iron fist rule over the United Kingdom for too long now. I mean, don't, don't you think that most of the members of Parliament and the uh, Prime Minister himself, Cameron, who had to go to Buckingham Palace when he was you know, elected Prime Minister, he had to first to get his blessing from the Queen before he took his position at Downing Street? Of course, these people, in the end, these members of parliament, you know, and, and of course, the House of Lords, they're part of the, the aristocracy in, in the United Kingdom. It all goes to the top. That, that's where the anger of the people of England should be focused on, not each other, not on fellow citizens, not burning down buildings and, and smashing shops, but going after those in power responsible for the situation that they're all in right now. Such as the Queen, such as all the princes and princesses and royals, the Windsors, whatever you want to call them, those New World Order puppet master scumbags. They're the ones who tax you and suck you dry. They're the ones who, well, basically, this is the saying I use here in the U.S. when it comes to our tax system. They, they, you, you get a nice, juicy steak, they take the nice juicy steak away from you via taxes and through these um, you know, government incentives, these little you know, hand-me-downs, these scraps such as welfare, food stamps, Social Security, etc. They're giving you back the, the bones, the fat that they didn't want, the, the charred flesh that they, that they were like, yeah, I'm not going to eat this. That, that's what it is. You people in England are, are, are whining over the scraps that the powers that be in your country are you know, cutting back on. They're giving you less of those scraps. Instead, you should have big, juicy steaks, just like us here in the U.S. and throughout the rest of the world. They've been sucking us all dry in every which way possible throughout the entire world, not just in England, not just in Wales, in Scotland, in North Ireland, in the United States, in Canada, Austria, New Zealand, 
the list goes on and on. The suppression is worldwide. And what's happening in England isn't simply racial motivated. I mean, I know some people are out there saying that, that, oh, this is all blacks doing this. No, it's not all blacks. Like I said a moment ago, I've seen plenty of videos, plenty of uh, photos where there's, there's whites involved in these riots and protests as well. Throwing rocks at police or whatever they can get their hands on because that's the best way they can fight back. And now you're, you have people in England, you know, citizens who have been terrorized by this, caught in the middle, unfortunately, caught in, in the crosshairs between the, the protesters, the rioters, and the police. You have these people. They're going to be begging and pleading with Parliament, with Prime Minister Cameron, with the Queen to step in and do something about it. And unfortunately, I fear the situation is about to get out of control in England. And like I also mentioned a moment ago, I believe that this has all been done by design. They wanted this to happen. They wanted these riots to spread across the United Kingdom. They want this situation because that allows them to carry out their you know, their objective, which is the same as it always is. Order out of chaos. Right now we have chaos in England. Fires burning, cars torched, along with double-decker buses and shops smashed. And citizens afraid to go outside because they're afraid of being looted and raped and killed by the rioters. So what's going to happen? Well, they're going to probably declare martial law, unfortunately. They're probably going to put troops on the street, or at the very least, more police officers. And they're going to, and the people of England, the people of the United Kingdom, are going to lose even more of the few precious rights and liberties that they have left. And that's the end game here, unfortunately, with this sad situation in England. Welcome back to the show. You are listening to Freedom Files live on this Tuesday afternoon, August 9th, 2011. I am James Burns, continuing with our coverage of what's been transpiring in England. This one coming from my friends Shepard and Bellis and Alex Thomas over at theintelhub.com, theintelhub.com. London set to be under martial law in the next 24 hours. Troops deploy against teenage population. Uh, Russia Today is reporting that although many called for military presence, so far they have not decided to use them. And see a tweet from RT, uh, Laura Emmett. In London, Cobra meets, but Home Secretary rules out what many are calling for, water cannons and army presence. And I think a moment ago I saw, yeah, I saw it, uh, yeah, on a Drudge Report, this update. Um, gloves come off, water cannons come out. So they have pulled out the water cannons after all. Yep, use of water cannons on rioters backed across the uh, political divide. Conservative and labor politicians say cannons should be used if necessary, but doubts remain over you know, the practicality of deployment. So they are definitely pulling out the water cannons on the populace who are out protesting in the streets of England. So it's coming, and um, it's crazy. I mean, and uh, continuing with this uh, story from uh, RT, uh, carried over by uh, the Intel Hub, officials had apparently decided to send out an enormous amount of police and and they've already done that, but they've sent out the police, and they're also now sending out, um, well, of course, the water cannons. Who knows what they're going to send out next? Possibly rubber bullets. Well, that would be great. Uh, interestingly enough, it seems the protests are initially nonviolent and started over a police killing, uh, but were turned violent after anarchists rallied people through Facebook. Yeah, I mean, there's several elements that cause it. I mean, I think ha part of it has to do probably with also the 16-year-old girl getting beaten by, by 15 police officers, and... I also mentioned a moment ago the, the possibility of there being uh, provocateurs, you know, cops dressed up like rioters and anarchists intentionally setting things off to get what they want. And it's pretty nasty. You, you can go to the, the intelhub.com and see a lot of the video uh, from uh, several, you know, parts of town of London uh, where, you know, police are fleeing from the rioters. So uh, the riots move north into. Birmingham. I mean, over the past couple of days, I mean, it's a really good site to go and check out this information. So feel free to log on to theintelhub.com. But going back to this article from The Guardian regarding the use of water cannons and rioters back to across the political divide, amid growing political media calls for water cannons to be deployed on the streets for mainland Britain for the first time to quell urban rioters, 
Support for their use has come from both sides of the political divide. Well, that is a big shocker, isn't it? (laughs) Surprise, surprise. However, some have raised doubts about the practicality of such a move, such as uh, Patrick Mercer, a conservative uh, member of parliament and former Army Army officer, told the BBC uh, in Northern Northern Ireland just a few weeks ago, we had a very serious riot, including the use of firearms where water cannons and plastic rounds, not lethal weapons, were used without anyone batting an eyelid. Uh, I am not saying that it is necessary that, you know, what we want, but we have got to allow the police to use their powers, and once they've arrested individuals uh, for the, you know, the judiciary process to punish them, uh, they should have the tools available, and they should use them if the commander of the ground thinks it is necessary. I don't think we have uh, necessarily um, to tell, I mean, I mean, basically, it's getting one step closer in the United Kingdom to the government basically just declaring outright martial law. I mean, now they've increased the size of the police presence on the streets. Now they've brought out the uh, the water cannons. I wonder if they have sound cannons, too. I know we have sound cannons here in the U.S. They're going to pull out the gas, uh, the gas launchers probably, tear gas. They're going to probably pull out the rubber bullets. And if it continues, they're going to most likely um, put troops on the street as well fully armed and with automatic weapons and it it's going to get nasty it's going to get really nasty before all this is over in the united kingdom and i i did see a bit of good news there was a turkish neighborhood in england i think it was somewhere around london where the community themselves without police help they pushed back the protesters they scared off these rioters I mean, whether or not they were, they, these are probably the more, more dangerous elements of the protesters. But this Turkish community, they came together and they, they basically ran off the protesters, the rioters, the anarchists, the provocateurs, whatever group that was coming to their community, to their, to their uh, homes and their shops to smash them to pieces, they ran them off. And that says something to me. That, that, that tells me that if we as communities stand up to crap like this, we stand up to people that are out on the streets and because of bad situations, legitimate reasons for hitting the streets and protesting, if you stand up to the criminal element that have only come out of, of the shadows because it gives them opportunity to go and commit all sorts of criminal acts like robbing and beating and raping and even killing people. If we stand together when it hits the fan as communities, as neighbors, because a lot of you live in neighborhoods just like I do, our apartment complexes, but if, if we actually stood together against this BS, against this crap that's coming our way in the U.S., because it's coming here. I mean, we talked about that in great detail yesterday on the radio show, how we were getting closer and closer to a it-hits-the-fan scenario in the U.S. I believe that we have to stand together. We, the people, we have to unite together as communities, as neighbors, and stand against this crap that, that's heading our way, this perfect storm that's brewing not only in, the, in England, in the United Kingdom, but also here at home. I mean, you have the debt deal. You know, that, that, that went through, so they're going to dig the hole deeper on the debt from last week. Plus, there looks like they're bringing forth this um, new entity called the Super Congress, which is basically going to now be above the Congress. I mean, basically making the Congress null and void now, another step towards a uh, police state, martial law, authoritarian regime that we have in this country, the uh, jigsaw pieces they've been putting in place for quite some time now. But it's not just that, the debt situation, the stock situation as well. Yesterday, it was a Black Monday. It went down, what, 634 points. Today, it's been kind of doing a roller coaster, going up and down, up and down. And that's not necessarily good either when it does that. When it does that, that's dangerous. I mean, before the end of the week, you could have another you know, another major drop in the stock market as well. But you also have the fact that the uh, dollar is going to continue to deteriorate in value. You have food prices, they're going to be going up, especially with what we've been experiencing across the country. I mean, we have massive droughts 
because of this heat, this record heat that's um, across the country, triple digits almost everywhere. And the, I mean, look at look at some photos in Texas, what they've been having to put up with drought for the past couple of months, ever since the spring. And they had massive fires. I mean, millions of acres were burned. And, you know, they're desperate to sell off cattle. So, I mean, record numbers of cattle are being sold to the uh, auction. So you're going to have a small, the, the price of beef is going to go down a little bit because of how much, how many cows are going to the slaughter because these farmers and ranchers simply can't feed their cows right now because of the economic situation, because there's no grass to feed them, because of so many other elements. But in a year from now, maybe sooner, you're going to see beef prices going back up. In fact, it's going to be higher than ever because so many cows would have gone to slaughter. And it takes at least a year for a calf to not only be born, but to mature and to be old enough to be considered a cow or a bull in order to reproduce. So with the situation that we have in the U.S., you have the, the, the cattle situation, the population of cows and bulls out there, and it's going to be dramatically cut down because of so many of them being sent off to the slaughterhouses. But it's not just beef. You're going to have uh, wheat prices go up because, you know, you've had, uh, because of the drought in Texas, you know, that's affected wheat, uh, the wheat crop. I mean, so many other situations as well. And it's going to get nasty. It's going to get really, really nasty. And this, so far, it looks like this heat isn't going away anytime soon. And, I mean, it's just, I mean, you have, just like in England, you have, you know, prime examples of police brutality on the rise, unfortunately. I'm sure there's plenty of good cops in England, plenty of good bobbies. Just like I want to believe there's plenty of good men and women in law enforcement here in the U.S., but there's also a growing number of bad apples who are not afraid to do whatever the hell they want. They're not afraid to harass citizens, to get taser happy, to beat people, to, to shoot people's dogs, to film you, to arrest you while you're filming them, even though it's okay for them to film us, apparently. But what happens to them when they, when they, they, they commit these, these police actions, these, these actions that if a criminal was to commit, they'd be thrown in the slammer. When a cop acts like a criminal, what, what happens to them? They get rewarded. Whenever they harass us and, and tase us and beat us and wrongly arrest us and shoot our dogs and even shoot and kill us, innocent citizens, what happens to them? They get rewarded. They get put on paid leave. But if you have cops like um, some police officers in L.A. who are speaking out against this uh, quota BS... Because there is a, there is an unwritten quota system where you know this happened. This is throughout law enforcement throughout the entire country, where police have to meet the quota. They have to write a certain number of uh, speeding and parking tickets, you know, to to meet their to meet the budget. <laughs> but when you have police officers, good police officers that speak out against this, they get punished. They're the ones who get punished. The good cops who say no, this is wrong. Why, why do we have quotas? We're not supposed to be about revenue collecting. The few good cops left that actually get it, that understand what being a police officer is supposed to be all about, well, they, they get demonized. They get punished by their fellow boys and girls in blue. And eventually, they get ran out of the police force. So you have less and less good cops serving throughout the country and more and more bad cops. So that, that number, unfortunately, is growing as well. And with so many other situations, such as unemployment, obviously that's part of the, probably part of the issue happening in the U.K. is the unemployment situation. You also have that here. Unemployment continues to go up as more jobs and businesses and factories and industries have been ripped out of this country over the past, what, 20 years at least, 20, 30 years, thanks in part to such clowns as, uh, well, Bill Clinton, Papa Bush, uh, Newt Gingrich, former Vice President Al Gore. We're going to talk about Al Gore coming up in a minute. Uh, he had a little... Um, <laughs> he kind of lost his cool at the Aspen Institute. We have that coming up in um, mere moments on the Freedom Files radio show. But back to our discussion about these situations that are brewing in this country and other countries. So many more people are out of work right now. 
on, on unemployment, on food stamps. I mean, food stamps is about, what, 46 million people now? And you know, Social Security, all these you know, government benefits or whatever you want to call them are running dry. They're running out. And the moment that happens, you're going to have some serious problems. Because look what happened in uh, Michigan. We talked about this yesterday in Michigan. Uh, 30,000 college students that were on food stamps were kick off, kicked off of food stamps by the state of Michigan to say, what, $75 million. And that's, do you think that's going to end well in Michigan? 30,000 college students that were dependent on food stamps? How, how do you think those 30,000 college students are going to take that? Not well. So we definitely got to keep an eye on what's happening in Michigan because you know, that's going to happen across the country once uh, the government decides to start cutting back on Social Security and food stamps and welfare and unemployment. It's coming. And my fear is it's going to happen before the end of the year. Maybe not. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe we'll make it to 2012. I, I have no idea what's going to transpire because there's so many other things up in the air right now, but with so many people unemployed, you know, get, losing their jobs, losing their cars, losing their homes, being pushed out onto the streets. If they're lucky, they got a friend or a family member they can go live with for a while till they get back on their feet, if they ever get back on their feet. But worst case scenario, they have to go into a shelter or they have to you know, live under a bridge in a cardboard box in alleys or they go off into one of these tent cities that the mainstream media rarely talks about. And these, these tent cities are all over the country right now, all over the place. You don't hear about them because they don't want to talk about them. They're everywhere, and they haven't gone away. They're growing in size. More and more people are, are having to go into these, these shanty towns, these Hoovervilles, Obamavilles, Wvilles, whatever you want to call them. People are losing everything right now and it's only a matter of time before you have some sort of incident that transpires here in the US that's going to lead to similar protests and riots like you're seeing in the UK and of course the powers that be want that they want riots they want protests they want anarchy they want chaos they want us to smash shops here in the US and burn buildings and uh, fight each other and kill each other they want that. They want us divided. Why do you think they have this two-party puppet show where they're always bickering back and forth? Why do you think the mainstream media always has different points of view and intentionally throws it out there, demonizing each other? Because they want us divided. They want us fighting each other. Because if we fight and kill each other, then that means we're, we're thinning out our numbers against the powers that be. And when the time comes, they can roll in their police state martial law grid. And then the rest of the people will be all for it because they'll say, yes. Thank you for coming in government and saving us from all the all the terrorists and extremists that were destroying our country and killing each other. Thank you. That's exactly what their end goal is. Welcome back to the show. You're listening to Freedom Files live on this Tuesday afternoon. It is August 9th, 2011. James Burns hanging out with you this afternoon. And, of course, of former Vice President Al Gore, Albert, Man Bear Pig, whatever you want to call him. Uh, last week, <laughs> oh, he, um, at Aspen, uh, the Aspen Institute, well, um, Mr. Gore, well, he kind of uh, lost his cool. They pay pseudoscientists to pretend to be scientists to put out the message, this climate thing, it's nonsense. Man-made CO2 doesn't trap. He, it's not. It may be volcanoes. Bullshit. It may be sunspots. Bullshit. It's not getting warmer. Bullshit. But And there are about 10 other memes that are out there. And when you go and talk to any audience about climate, you hear them washing back uh, at you. The same crap over and over and over again. They have polluted the shit. There's no longer a shared reality uh, on 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 an issue like climate, even though the the very existence of our civilization is threatened, people have no idea. It's no longer acceptable in a uh, mixed company, meaning bipartisan company, to use the god <laughs> word climate. It's not acceptable. They have polluted this to the point 
where it, 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 we, we cannot possibly come to an agreement on it because of this organized activity. Well, I have the uh, uncensored version on my... Hold on. <laughs> okay. I had to play it through iTunes on my MacBook. <laughs> I didn't realize I had it on auto over here because on the MacBook, whenever you play anything, it automatically has to be played through iTunes. You can't just... Like, like with a regular PC, you can play it through... Um, it just comes up through like Windows Media or something and that's it. But anyways, um, poor Mr. Gore, I feel so sorry for him. I have the uncensored version posted up on my YouTube channel, Freedom Files US. Feel free and friend and subscribe to me. I also added a little bit of uh, violin music in the background. It's very nice. And I also included a couple of news articles uh, regarding uh, Mr. Gore's um, various companies. Uh, like um, his car company, Fisker, where he got 500-something million dollar loan for these $90,000 electric cars. I mean, how is that supposed to help families? Man, I didn't realize that, that people uh, owned, you know, had that kind of you know, income to where they could afford a $90,000 automobile. I, I thought that people were lucky to have a twenty or $30,000 automobile, Al Gore. But anyways, not only Fisker, but also uh, some of his other companies, like, um, what was it, uh, Generation Investment Management, I think. I think that's right. Yeah, that's his, um, that's his carbon credit firm that he started with this guy named Blood. And the joke name was called, it was originally called uh, Blood and Gore. I kid you not. But, it, you know, and other articles about how um, he's poised to become the first uh, uh, green billionaire, uh, also being criticized for all his mansions and the fact that he consumes a whole bunch of power for his mansions. It, it just seems very hypocritical of Al Gore to be this champion of um, you know, being anti-global um, warming while at the same time, <laughs> uh, it, it's just this guy's a, a snake oil salesman, basically. I mean, he is. He's a snake oil salesman. I mean, what was he selling back in the 90s along with his buddy Newt Gingrich, Bill Clinton, and, of course, Papa Bush? He, he was selling NAFTA. He was going around, along with Newt Gingrich and all these other clowns, to the mainstream media pundits and circuits, saying how good NAFTA was going to be for this country. And we see what happened. Jobs, businesses, factories, industries ripped out of this country. And now the snake oil salesman returns after he, he took a fall in 2000. You know, that was basically what it was. He knew he wasn't going to win. That wasn't, that wasn't the way they were going to rig it. And, you know, in boxing terminology, you know, he, what, what's the word? It took a fall. That's what it is. They intentionally, you know, said, okay, you're going to take a fall here, but we're going we're to gear you up to become this, this quote-unquote hero of environmentalism, of global warming, of climate change. And you're going to get filthy, stinking rich while we suck the people even further dry with carbon tax. And that's exactly what's, what they're trying to do here with Al Gore and all his little companies and industries like Fisker and uh, what Generation Investment Management and all his mansions and his jets. He has a private jet, by the way. I mean, that's, that's very uh, economically friendly. Why doesn't he fly business or first class if, he wants to, if he's so concerned about uh, a carbon footprint? <laughs> oh, yeah, he also invented the Internet, too. Uh, so he's, he's this uber genius, uh, the prodigy of our time, Al Gore, former vice president. And uh, it's just sad, a sad reality that, that people actually still follow this clown. And, yeah, there's, there's, there's legitimate debate regarding climate, okay? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm not an idiot. I recognize the fact that it's 100-plus degrees out here. This is the hottest summer in, in I think, my past 30 years. You know, it's, it's, been, it's been pretty hot. I don't think it has anything to do with global warming or climate change. It, it's, it's the sun. It's the sun that's been you know, heating up. and you know, It's been dormant the past couple of years, and, and lately it's been starting to really churn up. I mean, proof in the pudding. I, I talked about this the other day, you know, solar storms. We had a solar, couple solar storms what, last week. And Noah, you know, I think I, I talked about this yesterday, how, you know, Solar storms coming from the sun could disrupt Earth this decade. And why, why do you think it? Why do you think you know ice is melting on Mars? Why do you think that we're supposedly other planets throughout the solar system are experiencing similar heating? 
Is it because of what we're doing here on earth? I seriously doubt that. I, 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 I mean, I think we have, I think we have a small, a small um, impact. I'm not denying that we, we don't. I'm just saying that we're giving ourselves way too much credit. Yeah, I mean, yeah, there's, last time I checked, there weren't any cars on Mars. I mean, there's a couple of what, rovers, what, two or three? I think one of them's still working. Yeah, but there's solar power. Exactly. There's solar power. But, I mean, this, the sun is, uh, of course, this one coming from space.com, sun unleashes largest solar flare in years, uh, an extremely powerful solar flare, the largest in over four years, rocked the, the sun. Uh, early Tuesday, today, but it's unlikely to wreak any serious havoc on Earth, according to scientists. Quote, unquote, it was a big flare. Uh, let's see, according to scientists at the Notion, National Oceanat- Oceanatic, you know, NOAA, um, the Space uh, Weather Prediction Center, where luckily we lucked out because uh, the site of the eruption of the sun was not facing Earth. But this is happening all over the, the sun. I mean, the sun's huge. And they have, it's having these eruptions all over the place. It's not just sunspots, Mr. Gore. It's also these solar storms and solar flares. That's another factor. You know, and, and with the Earth's tilt and, and the distance from the Earth to the sun. I mean, am, am I for off-the-grid technology? Am I for solar technology and for wind technology and another alternative energy? Yeah. Because, unfortunately, big oil and big energy control most of you know, petroleum and natural gas, unfortunately. That's, that's a reality. But at the same time, you know, my dad will agree with this as well. You know, Kerry Burns, the host of Cannabis Corner, it's very hypocritical for all these, you know, people that are pro-global warming and climate change and alternative energy to leave hemp on the side of the road. They don't even touch hemp. And hemp's been proven time and time again by, like, countless experts to be an excellent alternative fuel source. You, you want to stop ch- chopping down trees for paper or building materials? Let's grow hemp instead. Not, not only is hemp great for various things, not only rope and, and food products for feeding animals and ourselves, but it, uh, you know, my dad has talked about this countless times on his web show. Hemp is also an excellent oxygen producer. And people whine so much about carbon dioxide. And I think people get confused. They get confused about, and they want, them, they want you to get confused. They confuse carbon dioxide with carbon monoxide. We need carbon dioxide. Without carbon dioxide, plants and other life forms that produce oxygen would be dead. And if they die, guess what? We die. So, yeah, we need, we need carbon dioxide just as much as we need oxygen. Plants breathe, breathe it, and so does other lower-level level life forms that we don't even think about. At the, you know, the, at the bottom levels in the ocean, that most people don't even give you know, five-second thought to. Yeah, exactly. More, more CO2 is better for plant growth. And there are plenty of scientists that have come out that says we're not going through a warming period. It's very possible that we could be going through a, a mini ice age, perhaps even a big ice age. So, yeah, I mean, are we polluting the planet? Yeah, we are polluting the planet. But, I mean, they're, they're, they're focusing on citizens. They're going after citizens, t- demonizing us, telling us that you can't have hot baths anymore that you can't have this, you can't have that. You have to have smart meters in your homes for your air conditioning. But do they go after the corporations who do far worse, who dump uh, nuclear waste or garbage into the ocean? Yeah, rivers and lakes and streams? Do they go after them? No, they don't even touch them. Where was Al Gore when BP was destroying the Gulf of Mexico? When billions of gallons of oil dumped into the Gulf? Not just that, but... Also, the, the millions of gallons of Corexic that they dumped in there as well, making a bad situation even worse. It's very hypocritical, these, these green uh, globalist bastards, to come after the citizens while they completely ignore the corporatists, the corporations, the corporate elite. You want, you want to clean up the planet? Start with them. Because what we do, what we the people do, is small potatoes. You know, we would like to have alternative energy. We would like to have clean energy. We would like to have clean water. But at the same time, the corporations such as Big Oil, the military-industrial complex, bombing countries with, you you know, with UD. No, DU. My bad. I'm dyslexic. (laughs) But the point is, 
Go after them first if you really want a clean planet. If you really want to save the environment and save the planet, go after these monstrous uh, corporations and banksters who are destroying us every which way possible. That's what we have to go after. It's Freedom Files with James Burns on American Freedom Radio. Embarking on the second hour, you're listening to Freedom Files live on this Tuesday afternoon. It is August 9th, 2011. James Burns hanging out with you this afternoon, along with Adam, my network producer, man, the hound back at AFR HQ in Austin, Texas. I am coming at you live from Shreveport, Louisiana. I mean, there's just so many things going on today. I mean, it just seems like the past couple of days, I mean, it's just a whole bunch of events transpiring at the same time. You know, perfect storm brewing across the world at home here in the U.S. and, of course, across the pond in the uh, U.K. with those riots. And I was uh, looking at Facebook a moment ago, and somebody made a very good uh, observation. Yeah, uh, Douglas Patton, pretty plug there for you, Douglas, one of my Facebook peeps. Uh, Anarchy in, UK, in London won't create peace. It will only bring in the police state. We need a peaceful revolution from the grassroots up. And I... I agree with Douglas on his sentiments, so good points, Douglas. Let me give him a like there. I know, this <laughs> pathetic, you know, you know, socialing live in action. Anyways, if you'd like to uh, join us on various social networks, we are all linked up via our website, freedomfiles.us. From there, you can check out past shows, past guest interviews, and like I said, you can join us on various social networks, all linked at freedomfiles.us. We're on Facebook. We're on rtr.org. We're up at uh, YouTube.com. Our YouTube channel is Freedom Files US. Feel free and friend and subscribe to us. And we also have a poll question for you to uh, vote in on the FreedomFiles.us website. What is the greatest threat to life, liberty, freedom, and humanity? Uh, some of the options for you, the New World Order, corporations, corporate elite, governments, dictators, central banking, martial law, war, political parties, religions, isms, enemy rogue nations, terrorists, extremists, Illegal aliens, immigrants, sheeple, jellyfish, zombies, or other. Other could be anything. If you think that maybe all these uh, solar storms are the greater threat to you know life, liberty, freedom, and humanity, or, or you know robots becoming self-aware, like Skynet, are in the Matrix, for example. You get the idea. So feel free and uh, cast your vote. The uh, current tally right now, we have a tie for first place at the moment between the New World Order. And government slash dictators. And in second place, we have central banking. And in third place, it's sheeple, jellyfish, and zombies. And someone was asking me this last night. They sent me a message saying, James, I mean, isn't, isn't all this technically the New World Order? And I mean, yeah. Yeah, you're right. It, all this technically adds up to being part of the New World Order. But it's, it's just like a snake. Which part of the snake is the most dangerous aspect of the snake? It also depends on the snake, obviously. If it's, say, a poisonous snake, like a rattlesnake, is the uh, scales the most dangerous part of the rattlesnake? Or its eyes the most dangerous part? Is the rattler the most dangerous part? Or are the fangs the most dangerous part of the rattlesnake? And that's kind of the way I see the New World Order. Because without certain, certain components... The New World Order would be just a bunch of, you know, toothless rich people, you know, who have an agenda which will never be able to carry out their plans of global governments, of tyranny, oppression, and world depopulation. So which aspect of the New World Order is the most dangerous? The New World Order itself altogether, the entire snake, or a certain bit or piece? Now, of course, this snake that we're dealing with, there's not just the fangs to contend with. I mean, it's like taking uh, several... Uh, snakes, dangerous snakes, and putting them together into one big snake, like the most the most venomous snake on the planet, along with the you know that can bite you and also spit at you, and also um, you know constrict and wrap around you and choke you to death. So it's it's kind of like a you know one of these uh, you know engineered. Uh, you know, and I've heard about this where the you have scientists out there splicing DNA and creating these hybrids and these weird, twisted creatures, you know, obviously an abomination to nature. 
but that's the that's the kind of snake we're dealing with. I mean, this snake, this this entity, which can can kill you in many ways. It can bite you, it can spit at you, and it can wrap itself around you and choke you to death. So, which part, in your opinion, is the most dangerous part? Is it simply the entire snake, or is it the uh, corporations, the corporate elite? Is it governments and dictators? Is it the central banking? In your opinion, what is it? Or is it maybe, maybe us? Maybe we're the problem. The sheeple, the jellyfish, the zombies, obviously not you and me, but the, the masses in general who don't do jack squat about the snake, who refuse to stand up and pull out a gun and blow the snake away. Maybe that's the problem. So what, what is the greatest threat to life, liberty, freedom, and humanity? What, what is your thoughts on that? So feel free and log on to freedomfiles.us and, of course, cast your vote. And, of course, the uh, stock market, it's um, kind of had a up and down today. Uh, the stocks end uh, sharply higher. The Dow surges by 400 points, a bit better than yesterday. Uh, it ended at, what, down 634 points. And then, what, last Thursday it was down 512 points. But it's not necessarily a good thing that you had the stock going up and down all day long. I mean, that's, I mean, it's a roller coaster, and it's, it's very violent when it does that, and it's very possible before the end of the week we're going to have another plunge. I mean, tomorrow you could see the stocks take another dip by 500-plus points, maybe even higher. So it, it is pretty scary, especially if you happen to have you know, any stock or bonds or anything like that, empty, meaningless pieces of paper. I'm more of an advocate for uh, you know, commodities, hard assets like gold and silver, physical gold and silver, not uh, gold and silver written on a sheet of paper. I, I'd rather have the physical aspect of it. And, you know, it's just a culmination of things, a, a combination of many things. One thing, I mean, a lot of people, including myself and Bob Chapman, the internationalforecaster.com, you know, believes that this whole thing is rigged. And it is. I think it is rigged. What happened last Thursday, it was done intentionally. And I think what was done this past Monday, yesterday, was intentional. The Dow dropping. And, of course, a couple days earlier, uh, the U.S., for the first time in history, lost its AAA rating. That put blood in the water. Not to mention the fact that we've raised the debt ceiling and dug that debt hole even deeper than it already was. And you have idiots like uh, Greenspan, the former uh, Fed chair. Uh, he says that we can, we can solve the, the, uh, our debt problem. We just have to print more money. And, and here's a guy who used to be all about gold. He used to be all about the gold standard. I mean, talk about a turncoat. A Benedict Arnold right there, an Alan Greenspan. Yet people see him as a hero. And I, I just don't get that. I don't understand why, why people see Alan Greenspan and Ben Bernanke and Geithner and the rest of these scumbags who are just as guilty as the rest of these banksters who have been looting us. Why, why, do you, why, why do we even give these guys the time or day? Why do we? These people should be in jail for their crimes. They shouldn't have posh positions in government with nice $1,000 suits and limos and security detail and being allowed to go on the circuit and may have the mainstream media and uh, throw out their propaganda and BS. <laughs> they should be behind bars, most of these criminals in our government, most of these bureaucrats. Hell, most of our elected officials should be behind bars. Unfortunately, because most of them are corrupt. You had a poll out what last week. 46% of the population believes the Congress is corrupt. Now, there's obviously a few exceptions, a few good congressmen and women and senators that still stand for the people. But a lot of them are crooks. A lot of them are nothing more than puppets. And uh, I don't know where they went wrong. Maybe they were wrong from the beginning. Maybe they're nothing but sociopaths. I mean, you got to gauge each person's story differently in this regard. Maybe most of them that got into politics actually got in under noble intentions. 
under the best of intentions. But you know what they say about the best of intentions? That paves the way to hell, and that's where we're at right now. But the problem is, even if, even if all of them, even the worst of the worst of our Congress critters started out as good guys with the, the best hopes, the best intentions of going to Washington and turning things around and doing right by the people, unfortunately, along the way, they got tempted. They got bribed. They got compromised. They had their war chests filled up by these you know, corporatist elite, the powers that be. These people came in, and they knew exactly which string to pull, the purse string. They came in and said, hey, I like what you're doing. I like what you're all about. Yeah, I support you. Well, I see that um, you're having some trouble with your funds. Well, me and a couple of my friends, well, we've been talking about you. We like you. And we'd like to help you out. And we're going to hold some charity events for you, some fundraising. We're going to put some money in your campaign. Really, really help get you elected because we need people like you in Washington. And it's only after the fact, after these elected officials go to Washington or the state or local levels of government, when they finally realize the truth. When their their buddies, their friends, who uh, filled up their, their war chests, are now calling them on the phone saying, hey, how you doing? Congratulations. I knew you could do it. Wait, you know... We got some problems. We got some things we need help with. And you're the guy, you're the gal who can help us out. And that's what happens. These people become, as I say, compromised. They're no longer listening to we the people. They're listening to those who filled up their, their campaign funds. I mean, look, look what happened over the past couple of years, 2008 with the banker bailouts. Uh, we the people were screaming. At Congress, no, let them fail. Nine out of ten people that contacted Congress via the, the phone circuit, burning up the switchboard through fax, through email, through snail mail, we were ignored. Meanwhile, you had the former President Bush and President um, candidates like Obama and McCain standing side by side telling you and me that we had to bail out the banksters. And if we didn't, we were going to be in a lot worse trouble than we already are. And what happened? We're in a lot worse trouble than we already are. We bail them out with hundreds of billions of dollars, even probably more, probably trillions, and a lot of that money disappeared, similar to what happens over at the Pentagram every now and then. A couple trillion dollars disappears here and there, and well, what a day before what the uh, 9/11 attacks nearly 10 years ago, old Rummy, who was uh, in charge of the uh, was the uh, Secretary of Defense, the SecDef, or is it DefSec? I think it's SecDef. Anyways, he goes out on national TV, speaking on his pulpit at the Pentagram, saying, "Well, we don't know where these couple trillion dollars went. We got no idea. I don't know." Then what happens the next day? Inquiries. The mainstream media picking up on it, investigations into the Pentagon. What happens the next day? Oh, that's right. A couple buildings got hit in New York, and, of course, the, the Pentagram also got hit. <laughs> and all of a sudden, uh, that couple trillion dollars that was missing, all that went under the rug. <laughs> Amazing how certain um, Pearl Harbor-like events that uh, the neocons were uh, calling for in the PNAC document back in 2000 just <laughs> happened to fall in their lap. What are the chances of that? So this entire system is corrupt and it's out of control. But unfortunately for us, the simple fact that you have people legitimately hitting the streets and protesting like what's happening in England over various issues, obviously, police brutality, uh, the government corruption, unemployment. You know, there's probably a, a list of reasons why people are on the streets. And, of course, there's also the, the bad element that would hit the streets anyways, no matter what. They, they love a good riot. They love a good opportunity to go looting and robbing and raping and pillaging. 
But unfortunately, what you see happening in the United Kingdom is kind of a, a window into our own future here in the U.S. Because as, as long as things continue to get worse and worse here, as long as we continue to lose our rights and our freedoms and liberties, and the police state continues to expand its powers over us, and unemployment continues to go up, more people are becoming dependent on the government, and all that d- dries up along with the dollar collapsing. You already have China. You know, they're, they're on the bully puppet right now talking about how it's time for the dollar to be replaced as the world currency and for the world to go with a, a breadbasket system of various currencies. So the moment that happens, um, the dollar is going to become even less worth anything. Eventually, it could go the way of the Weimar muck. Weimar mark, I don't know. But the, the, the problem is here, you, you go and you see what's happening in the United Kingdom. And it, it definitely is our future, I think. It's the ghost of Christmas future for the U.S. Because, yeah, we have legitimate reasons to hit the streets, to protest the tyranny and the oppression and the fact that, you know, so many jobs have been ripped out of this country and we have unemployment on the rise and the dollar's collapsing, the housing market's gone. And food prices are going to be going up along with gas prices and taxes. So you know that's coming. I've been talking about that for weeks now. It was my belief that, the, that this whole debt you know, circus was a charade between the two-party two puppet show. They had a deal already on the shelf, ready to go. They just wanted to throw out a little song and dance for you to keep us even more divided you know, against each other instead of working together against our common enemy. And that's the powers that be. And and so we're going to hit the streets eventually because of all this. We're going to hit the streets. And unfortunately, they're going to throw out their provocateurs, cops disguised as one of us. And they're going to start causing problems. But not just provocateurs. You're going to have definitely a criminal element that hits the streets as well. Intentionally going out there to do exactly what they're doing in England. To loot, to rob, to beat and to rape and kill fellow citizens. And that's going to give them the excuse that they need to hit the switch for this martial law police state grid they've been putting in place. And that's why we have to be as peaceful as possible. We have to try and peacefully resolve this, no matter what. Even if it does come to the time where we finally have enough and we do finally get off our couches and get out on the streets, we have to be as peaceful as humanly possible or else... They're going to get exactly what they want. Welcome back to the show. You're listening to Freedom Files live on this Tuesday afternoon. It is August 9th, 2011. James Burns hanging out with you this afternoon. Be sure and check out my website, freedomfiles.us. And for the rest of the show, we are joined riding shotgun with me and you. Is Kerry Burns, my dad. He is also the host of the web show, The Cannabis Corner. You can check out his website, CannabisCorner.us. Kerry, welcome to the show. Thank you, James. How are you doing today? Well, same old, same old. So what are your thoughts about what's been transpiring in the world the past couple of days? Well, I think that, you know, like this thing at the stock market, I mean, those people that, that dumped all their stock, I'm sure they dumped it at a much higher price than they paid for it, made a lot of money. And, of course, usually when the stock market starts falling apart like that, other stocks lose their value. And so the, when, if you can turn right around a couple of days later and buy all the stocks you dumped for about half of what you uh, sold them for, then you, you make a nice profit. And I think that's what we're seeing today, the, the surge in the market today where it's is probably these people rebuying stocks at a cheaper price than they did a few days ago when they dumped it. And – it's the way you, the stock market works, but unfortunately, these people are able to really manipulate major change in it because they own a lot of, a lot of the stock. And uh, I would like to know what percentage of the people that dump stock were individuals versus big conglomerates, you know, big entities that control a big bulk of it. And how many of them were foreign investors like Saudis and stuff like that, you know, that really manipulate our economy. And then, of course, our you know, downgrading from our... Well, you, you definitely have plenty of groups manipulating everything, not just the Saud, the House of Saud, but the uh, the elite, the royals, the powers that be, all these, you know, 
infamous names like the Rothschilds, the Rockefellers, the list goes on and on. I, I think that's that's part of what's happening here. I think there is definitely a lot of this being done by design intentionally. And the uh, the result, of course, is you're, you're seeing a lot of this economic uncertainty, and it's leading to a lot of global unrest. And um, according to the CNBC, uh, of course, we've been talking in great detail the past you know two days about what's been happening in England with these riots. But you have to also remember there's protesters going on in uh, Israel. Uh, you've had like 200, 300,000 people protesting in Tel Aviv and other cities throughout Israel. Uh, their basic demands are over. Uh, increased personal tax brackets for homeowners. Uh, they enshrine the rights to housing in the law, introduce rent controls, boost mortgage relief, stop further privatization of things such as uh, health facilities, um, provide free education. So they, they have their own list of demands about things as well. Look at the Syrians. I yeah, mean, they're going yeah, crazy. Syria, I mean, uh, Assad, he's slaughtering them with his tanks and whatnot. So you got that protest going on. In uh, Spain, Greece, Portugal, the Eurozone is in serious trouble right now. And, I mean, China, there's even issues in China right now. So, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a global phenomenon that's uh, taking place. And then you look at the famine disaster that's going on in Somalia. I mean, if, if anything should be topping the news and really be striking the heart of people, yeah. it should be that. Not worried about that. All these billionaires on Wall Street, whoopee do How much money did you lose the other day? A few hundred million, but you gained it back. I mean, you mm -hmm. get real. We're not stupid. We're not. Americans aren't stupid. How many hundreds of billions did y'all make when you dumped all that stock the other day at a high price? And then today you turn around, oh, let's boost the market back up and buy all these stocks that fell in, you know, dollar two per share. And Well, see, the example you just threw out there regarding what's happening in Somalia is a prime example as to the the real intentions of the uh, elite the powers that be exactly if they had benevolent intentions for us they would be focusing on feeding everybody right you wouldn't have people starving in the world because if if, if you allowed the u.s to grow you know a maximum amount of food in other countries that are bread baskets you could easily feed the, feed the world you could easily have you know you know hygiene and sanitation well, and what, jobs what amazes me is james is that this drought condition in Somalia that caused the famine didn't happen this year. It didn't happen last year. This, this lack of rain, they hadn't had rainfall there in over three years. Now, the first year that they didn't have rainfall, right then is when the humanitarian aid should have started stacking up. Not wait till the last minute where you have 300,000 kids that are yeah. about to kill over because they don't have anything to eat yeah. and haven't had anything. We should have... We should have seen the seen it coming, mm -hmm. but no, we're too concerned about you know making sure that the uh, politicians in Washington get front screen on the media, and and of course, like you said, they didn't have a benevolent plan in place anyway. They they, 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 they want, wanted the starvation. They want yeah. they want people to die. They yeah. want they want to reduce the population of the planet. So so what what's what's with you know a couple hundred thousand kids in Somalia. Yeah. You know, why do they care? Sure, they don't care about those yeah. people. I mean, I'm, I'm sure they're walking around with a violin right now. Yeah, I mean, if, if 300,000 wildebeest all of a sudden mysteriously died in the desert, you'd hear more about that and wondering what the heck's going on here than you'd ever hear about these poor people exactly that are starving. And, and you know, so many people to you know go and debate the the globalist position. They're always out demonizing us, and it's like, well, how do you know that they're bad? How do you know that they're evil? I mean. For one thing, you're right. I'm, I'm not there on the meetings. I don't get to go to Bilderberg or Bohemian Grove, or I'm not in the CFR or any of these other roundtable groups. I'm not rubbing shoulders with the elite. But you, you see how evil they are by their actions. Well, it's just like statistics. Mm -hmm. People look past statistics when, it, the, when it's a very good indicator of what's going on in the world. I mean, we, we, we look at statistics when it matters to the people that are have all the control and everything, yeah. but when it affects the people or, or the lower class people and stuff, then all, but somehow it gets swept under the rug a little bit, you know, and it's not that big a deal. And that's what we're seeing. We just we if it affected their pocketbook, if if the if they were the ones that were selling the food to Somalia and the food was the cutoff was going to affect their pocketbooks, I guarantee you, they not only would have the U.S. Army in there keeping those groups that are keeping the food from getting there, but you'd have so many planes landing, you wouldn't even have room for them on the airstrip for the mm -hmm. amount of food that would be going there if they were if making they a buck off of it. Well, yeah, you know? that and if they actually cared about feeding and right. 
and taking care of well, their fellow man. If they just cared enough where they were going to make a yeah. buck off of it, at least the people would be getting fed. Yeah. You know, who paid the bill would be one thing. Yeah, the problem is the elite do not see us as fellow, as equals. They no. see us as as worms and bugs to be stepped on. Sure, so. and, and, you know, those people are just a thorn in their side. You yeah. know, what, what's 300,000? Yeah, they they, don't, they don't all care. die. We don't care. Do you think they care about the hundreds of thousands or millions of Middle Easterners that have been killed since the war on terror began? Well, do they care about the hundreds of thousands of people in America that die every year from starvation? Yeah. Here in this country, yeah, they don't every care. night there's mm-hmm. thousands of children that go to bed every night that didn't have supper. You know, they didn't have supper. And the meals they had that day probably... You and I, we would probably be falling out from weakness if we ate that small amount. But do we care about that? No, we don't care about that. It's 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 more important to uh, you know to be worried about chasing after the people out there that are smoking marijuana on the streets. You know, we certainly spend enough money going after them, and and we prevent an industry that could actually help America. Yeah, and that's what it, it's about. It's about them a controlling us and b taxing us to death and th- those those work side by side i mean you see what happened in in um the uk it's very similar to what's happening here and I, as i said a moment ago uh, the united kingdom is definitely a window into our own future because they have no gun laws they have a very very enforcing government a lot more than ours and ours is getting there getting getting i mean they're definitely following uh, the uk's playbook i mean they have they have cameras everywhere all over the capital city of london they also are anti-drug, and they also have those laws. And that's, that's part of the reason why they, they killed this uh, – what's his name? Let's see. Uh, yeah, Mark Duggan, because they said he was an alleged uh, cocaine dealer. Yeah. What well, a good but, excuse. But see, if, if drugs were legal in the United Kingdom, if they were legal here, then he wouldn't – I mean, if he was an actual cocaine dealer, uh, he could – there would be a legitimate business. Right. And – so they, they shot and killed him because supposedly he had this replica uh, pistol that had been uh, converted to fire live ammunition, even though the uh, IPCC says there's no evidence he shot the police. If we, but, know, if we know for sure, that, and we know for sure that drug interdiction in the world, not only the United States, which is a, you know, the front runner, mm-hmm. and we make all these other countries adopt our laws and stuff, but we know for sure that drug interdiction catches less than four to five percent of the actual stuff that comes in so anybody out there that wants to use drugs they have easy access to that even though there is the fear of going to jail and all that that's always which is wrong but if if it is that prevalent and that easy for people to get why don't we set up legitimate businesses do away with the prison industrial complexes locking all these people up and actually offer jobs to people that are in the drug business, we don't care that people open up liquor stores or people that sell open tobacco stores. Those are hard. Those are the hard, two hardest core drugs that kill more people than anybody, anything on this well, planet. Not to mention big pharma well, and big the pharmaceuticals. They add another two hundred thousand to the death toll every year. We don't care about that. We don't care about pharmacies setting mm-hmm. up. Why would we care about some store setting up and selling uh, cannabis products or setting up uh, selling you know clean? Uh, pharmaceutical grade heroin for people who actually are addicted until they can get help yeah. to get off of it, if I they mean, so choose. Yeah, I mean, it's just like people that drink. I mean, most people that drink don't think they have a problem, and, right. and probably they don't. They just like to drink. And, well, it doesn't matter even if they even yeah. if they do have a problem. It's their right yeah. to put in their body, as long as they're not harming somebody else, mm-hmm. it's their right to do that. Why, why do we go after potheads? The pot hasn't killed anybody. There, you can't. There's not a recorded death on any statistics anywhere that was due to a pot overdose or a marijuana problem. N- none. Why do? Why would we care? Well, I, I think the majority of the American people now have gotten to the point now of everything else going on where they they don't really you know they yeah but they don't go to the polls and vote. Yeah, well, that's a sad reality. And we don't vote these politicians out like like Senator McConnell that in all this wheeling and dealing they got he got ten million dollars for his state so they could fly the helicopters yeah. up there to look for marijuana growing. Uh, he's I mean, a come on, scumbag. Just I mean, like seriously, the rest of them. <laughs> seriously, McConnell, you worried about the budget and all that, and you're going to pay to have wow. a helicopter pollute the atmosphere above his state. So they can look for marijuana. I, I definitely have serious issues with that neocon scumbag. Not only that, but the fact that he was one of the first proponents of uh, telling Obama that you should just use an executive order yeah. and bypass Congress for raising the debt ceiling. And him and Reid were the two authors of this super Congress. Exactly. And also, too, you know, they're all on 
they're all on vacation this week, yeah. this month. And of course, uh, McCain yesterday had a town hall meeting, and all the people there at the meeting were just jumping into him. And all what comes out of his mouth? Not uh, no, not that. Yes, we at Congress have screwed up, and we have got America in bad shape, and all that. I just want to remind y'all people that well, for the first two years, Obama and uh, and the Democrats controlled all three houses of government, trying to pass the buck. Of course, when he knows damn well that when Bush was president and all that, the amount the Republicans had a lot to do. With digging the hole of debt yeah. that we have, well, they're just as guilty. I mean, they're just, just like, as guilty. There's yeah. and yet instead of taking blame for it and telling his constituents, mm-hmm. "Hey, yeah, I'm sorry, we did screw up and all that. Vote me out next time, and let's get somebody in there that will well, actually listen it, to it's you." It's just like I was talking about a moment ago. We run back to 2008, the banker bailout situation. You had President Bush plus both presidential candidates, Obama and McCain, exactly. telling you and me that we had to bail out the bankers. Had to. I mean, I'm, I'm sure he's an old guy now, and he probably conveniently forgot about that with his Alzheimer's. What would it have done for this country, instead of bailing out the bankers, if we'd have taken that trillion or two trillion? Yeah. We don't even know how much it was. Put it in the Main Street. No, if we had put it against our debt, yeah. just paid that much of our debt off. Where would we? We wouldn't have had to have well, the. We wouldn't have had to have all this squabbling about the debt ceiling well, because guess what? We wouldn't be the, there. The problem with a lot of the debt, a lot of the debt is is fictitious. Yeah, it's fictitious. It, it, it was created by these these a-holes in our government and a lot of it is not on on we the people i mean i think i would rather taken that money put it in the main street used it to build new jobs and rebuild the infrastructure i would rather done that well if you didn't give it to those bastards in wall street if you had invested it in business and invested in the hemp industry my Mm -hmm. god you want to look for an avenue to how about you want a green industry one that could put people to work and one that could really solve a lot of issues if we had done that, we wouldn't be in the shape we're in right now. We wouldn't be facing another recession, or I don't think we ever climbed out of the first one. I think we had just it, sort it's of not a, even a recession. That's just they, they don't want to use the D word. Yeah, exactly. It's, it, that's the truth. We live, we live in this pathetic PC society where, oh, we can't use the D word. No, not the D it's word. It's like somebody that's $100,000 you know, in debt, and they go and they bar. Somebody loans them $100,000, and they pay that $100,000 debt off, and they say, oh, boy, I've got my business straightened out now. Oh, whoopie yeah. do!" And yet you're still $100,000 in debt. Yeah. You know, you haven't done anything. But it, See, this is one thing I've been toying around with is I think that they're trying to come up with a new word. They have this think tank that they're spending a couple million dollars on of all these eggheads somewhere trying to come up with a new word instead of, the D word. Mm-hmm. That word, of course, is depression. Yeah. So they're, they're trying to come up with something else. Some long-winded word. I think it's going to be something like, you know, we already had the Great Depression. Now this one's going to be the not-so-great depression. Because well, not, no, that, no, it's, not that, that it's that, not a magnitude. I, I think they don't want to use the D word because yeah. they're afraid of the impl- implications. But yeah. the fact is, Truth you, look, speaks you look at the numbers, you look at the, the everything else, the facts. Yeah. And Statistics. the facts equal depression. It's yeah, it's sure. very simple. I mean, you have to be a complete moron not to see it. Well, it's like saying we're not in debt. Yeah. You know, I mean, we are. We are in debt, and we're borrowing 42 cents on the dollar. Why are we doing that? Mm-hmm. Why do we do that? Well, I mean, like you were saying a moment ago, the Republicans are just as guilty as the Democrats. Just as guilty. And then you have Newt Gingrich out there, who himself is a million dollars in debt. His campaign is. And he was calling Obama the president of the, the welfare party or something. Well... I mean, if it wasn't for Newt Gingrich and his buddies Al Gore and Bill Clinton and the Papa NAFTA. Bush and NAFTA, mm-hmm. maybe we wouldn't have as many people on food stamps, 46 million people. So One in seven households it, are on this, food stamps. This, in, this entire two-party puppet show, with a few exceptions, is to blame for the situation we're currently in. Kerry Burns is my guest. His website, CannabisCorner.us. We'll be right back. Final segment of Freedom Files coming your way right here on American Freedom Radio. This afternoon, you're listening to Freedom Files live on this Tuesday afternoon, August 9th, 2011. James Burns, joined by my father, Kerry Burns, host of the Canvas Corner, his website, canvascorner.us. Coming up tomorrow on the Freedom Files radio show, we're going to be joined in the 3 o'clock hour by Dr. Paul Conant. He is the executive director over at the Fluoride Action Network, their website, fluoridealert.org. That is fluoridealert.org. And uh, the reason why we're having him on the show tomorrow is because this week is Fluoride Awareness Week. So we're going to talk in great detail about fluoride poisoning 
tomorrow coming up on the Freedom Files radio show. And don't forget, on Thursday, we'll be joined by Bob Chapman in the 3 o'clock hour, as always. His website, theinternationalforecaster.com. And if you have any questions for either Dr. Uh, Conant from uh, Fluoride Action Network tomorrow or Bob coming up on Thursday, feel free to email me your questions via our website, freedomfiles.us. And in the final segment, now, let's talk about um, solutions, of course, (laughs) to uh, the problems we have. Obviously, I, I really don't think what's happening in the United Kingdom, Dad, is the the way to go. I mean, I think I think if it, if it comes down to the point where you're having a violent revolution, that's when everything else has been basically exhausted. That's the last resort. When you have yeah. the coup, that's the last resort. And the the only thing that happens when people go berserk like that, they they bring themselves to a level that the people who caused that uprising want them to be at because they'll just say, "Look at those damn idiots." Look at how they're acting. See, these people don't have and it, and what it does, the whole point and purpose of your protests and everything is thrown out the window because all then the focus becomes is look at these bunch of idiots and how they're acting. And I think peaceful ways are the best way to do it. I think you can get you can amass a lot of people in numbers and have peaceful organizations that say a lot. I mean, look at Woodstock. If you really want to look at it, it wasn't just a music celebration. It was it, it was a protest. It was a protest to the Vietnam War. It was a protest to the government. It was a protest to the war on drugs. All of that, but it was a peaceful one. And there weren't there weren't any problems with seven hundred thousand people getting together. And this was what thirty five forty years ago. So peaceful demonstrations do work. And if you have to do them in the form of a concert or music and stuff like that to keep people peaceful, that's fine. At least your meaning and everything that you're protesting, the point and focus of it does get out there. And the media doesn't get hyped up on this, oh, look at these idiots. They're throwing rocks and bottle, you know, Molotov cocktails in the street. And I'll see how they're acting. And I'll, how, could we, how does that have any validity? Yeah, people have an absolute right to be protesting. My God, you'd be an, you'd, you'd be an idiot with blinders on if you didn't think there wasn't plenty enough out there to complain about and to get upset about and to protest over. But you can do it in a way and get your point across and make it worthwhile and not have it distracted upon by some foolish act on yourself. Don't, don't bring yourself down to the level of the people that caused everything to bring it, bring it to that point. Yeah. You know, make yourself smart. You know, look, this is what we're fed up. We're tired of the government locking people up for pot. We're tired of the hemp industry not being happening. We're tired of these unconstitutional wars. All of that. You have a very valid. We're tired of the of the economy and the way things are and how and we the get police state, police state, mater, the military yeah. industrial complex. Those are all very, very valid, valid mm-hmm. protests. And people have people should be out protesting them. But do it in a way to where your point is made, yeah. not where you're made to look like an idiot. That's right. L- look like a, an idiot or, a, as they say, a domestic extremist right. or a terrorist. Well, you, you know, if people – I mean, you remember that girl Darlene. Every time she uh, got let's, on – Let's not talk about that. Well, I'm that. talking about I'll, people who rant and rave. Well, well, They're not listened to. I know, I know. And that's the point I was trying to make. Well, If, if you're a ranting and raver, you're not going to be listened to. Yeah. Anyways, we got breaking news. Um, According to the National Journal, Democrats Murray, Bacchus, and Kerry have been appointed to the Super Committee. Uh, Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid will appoint Democratic Senators Patty Murray of Washington, Max Bacchus of Montana, and John Kerry of Massachusetts to this new Super Committee task. You know, with uh, well, they 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 they're posing it as finding the 1.2 trillion dollar in additional deficit reductions by November 23rd. But I mean, obviously, the Super Congress is going to be used for other purposes. And apparently we're getting an idea of how the uh, members are being um, selected. Uh, three members have been appointed by uh, Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid, and the rest of them will be appointed by, of course, uh, in the Senate, the uh, Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell, which we've been talking about so admirably the past few minutes, that neocon. He's going to get to pick the next three uh, senatorial uh, members of the Super Congress. Then you're going to have House Speaker Boehner, He'll select uh, three Republicans in the House, and then uh, a minority leader in the House, Nancy Pelosi, she's going to get to select uh, three uh, Democrat representatives. So right now we are having our list of uh, traitors uh, growing. So uh, Harry Reid, yes, he's a traitor, obviously, unconstitutional. But now you have Patty Murray, add her to the list. 
uh, Max Bacchus, and of course, surprise, surprise, Skull and Bonesman, John Kerry. And who's the tiebreaker of it all? The president. Exactly. He's also going to be on there. Yeah. Un- unofficially, but yes, officially, yes, he's going to be part of this quote unquote Council of 13. It has many names. They're calling it Super Congress. Uh, the more PC name is the Super Committee, which is it's anything but a Super Committee. And of course, yes, the president's definitely going to have the, uh, the, the tiebreaker abilities, and they're going to be able to fast track things through Congress without any m- amendments, any debates, simply an up and down vote. They're going to have new extraordinary powers, and they're not going to be held to the um, the same standard or our levels of responsibility that uh, the current legislative body is supposed to follow. Well, don't you know that Thomas Jefferson's rolling over <laughs> in his grave? Well, they all are. Yeah. I'm really glad we don't have time travel technology because if we were to bring those guys back, I'd love to. I don't think I, I think they would drop over dead. They well, would, they would, they would they could not they probably I, could not fathom how bad things. Are. I hope right before they drop dead though that they go up there well, with a baseball bat and bop these guys in the head. Well, and say, who are you? You know what? I'm 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 I think I'm a backtrack there. I think they they have more stomach than most of the American citizens have. Yeah. I don't think they would drop over dead. I think they'd be ticked off. Yeah. I think they would make a movement immediately to get it straightened out. You know? But, I mean, they, they foresaw this coming. Sure they did. I mean, a lot of their papers, they, they foresaw the fact that eventually tyranny would return. Well, that was the whole point of, you know, of all the, of why they lined things out the way they did. They were smart enough to realize that if you had things a certain way, guess what's going to happen? Chaos. And, and that's why we have a constitution. But unfortunately, our leaders and our lawmakers and the people who run this country, they've pretty much thrown the Constitution in the trash. And so that's why you have these unconstitutional groups like the Super 13 forming. That's totally illegal. It's like these, uh, it's like this, this, these uh, regions, that these eight regions they developed here a while back, you know, that we're going to take Actually, over. it's ten regions. Ten regions, the, uh, yeah. The Council of Governors, Governors, which was an executive order signed by the president January 2010, Basically, doing away with the uh, the 50 states and creating 10 FEMA regions, each one with a FEMA regional governor appointed by the president. Right. This is just another great another, like that. Another piece of the puzzle being put into place. Exactly. And it's just it's sad. In America, we have the right to vote these people out. Don't be ashamed to get rid of the incumbent. He he's part of the problem and has been for a long, long time. Get rid of them. These people like McCain and Kerry and all, I mean the list is I mean, there's ninety nine percent of them. There's only you could it'd be easier to name the few that are good up there and get rid of the rest of them and do it the next time you vote. Don't don't give them another chance yeah. because they're going to they're going to give you all this hard luck. Or oh well we I know here's the problems and we're going to straighten them out and we're going to take care of this and all that. They're not going to do it. It's just another lie. Show them hey. You know what? I'd rather have somebody in there that I can get rid of every two or three years exactly. than have somebody in there that's going to screw up the way and, y'all act. And you and I and everyone listening knows that this super Congress is, hasn't been put in place simply because of the, of the debt crisis. That's a joke. It, it's just another reason, an excuse for them to come in and start. I mean, they, they've already come out with proof. I mean, the Gun Owners of America and several other alternative media sites have come out with evidence, proof that you know one of the, the first targets – of the super committee is going to be the second amendment. Sure. They're, they they're coming after us every which way possible through the ATF, through the DOJ, even, even they were talking about how the president may even use an executive order. If you didn't have the drug war going out there, you wouldn't have this violence on the streets. Yeah. You wouldn't even want to be worried about the guns. Yeah. People would be hunting with them like they do. The only reason we have guns and violence on the streets is because of this drug war. Yeah. And if you make guns illegal, it's not going to stop the criminals from getting guns. Absolutely Most not. of the criminals, they've got their guns through the black market anyways. But in the final minute we have left, uh, what do you got coming up this week on the Cannabis Corner? We're going to finish the part three on the right to choose, and uh, we're going to pretty much sum – we're going to add a few extra things we haven't talked about, but we're going to pretty much sum up how it is America's right to choose. And it is our constitutional right to express our individuality as Americans, not Republican, Democrat, but as Americans. That's where we seem to have lost focus in this country. We're Americans here. The parties are a joke. And anybody believes in the Democrat or Republican Party more is, is really missing in action. They don't know what's going on. And we need to take America in focus. And that's where it needs to go. America, folks. Freedom of choice. Exactly. And how can people get to the website? 
CannabisCorner.us. Of course, the YouTube channel, Cannabis Corner YouTube. Yep. YouTube, uh, Cannabis Corner. Friend to subscribe to the Cannabis Corner. Of course, friend to subscribe to us as well, Freedom Files US. Coming your way tomorrow on the show, we are going to be joined by Dr. Paul Connett. He is the executive director over at the Fluoride Action Network, their website, fluoridealert.org. FloridaAlert.org. It's Florida Awareness Week, so we'll be talking to him tomorrow in the 3 o'clock hour. And if you have any questions for Dr. Cornett, Connett, I'm, I'm saying it wrong, Dr. Connett, Connett, if you have any questions for him, please feel free and email me via the FreedomFiles.us website. And don't forget on Thursday, as always, we're joined by Bob Chapman, the internationalforecaster.com is his website. And if you have any questions for Mr. Chapman, you can email me as well via freedomfiles.us. That is what's coming your way tomorrow on the Freedom Files radio show. We are all out of time, but thank you so much for joining us. And be sure and check out Cannabis Corner, hosted by my dad, Kerry Burns, his website, cannabiscorner.us, and our website, of course, freedomfiles.us. Back live tomorrow, 3 p.m. Central, right here on AFR. 